Brilliant. Well, gosh, I'm really excited to be here and um, I'm really honoured that this is the, the first webinar for Particle Shop and the more that I use this plugin, honestly, the more I really, really love using it. So I'm looking forward to showing you some of the, the different ways that I use it in my artwork. Um, you'll see here an image of, this was a fantastic Bristol-based model called Paul Walker that I took this image um, last week and just couldn't wait to play with it. So we're going to open up Particle Shop in a little while, but one thing I want to point out is that you need your image to be in RGB color space and 8 bits per channel. So if your image isn't in these, you just need to click on the options in mode. Okay. So you can access Particle Shop in two different ways from within Photoshop. The first is in the filter menu under Painter and Particle Shop, but you can also access it through your extensions menu options. And that's what I'm going to use here. And this is great because it gives you options to duplicate your layer or merge your layers um, or use the layer that you're on. Um, and Particle Shop will actually work on your layer, but it will alter it. So it's best to actually have a layer that you don't mind um, being altered. So I'm going to duplicate active layer here and click Launch Particle Shop. And here we get the little reminder to create a copy of your selected layer. I'm going to click on the Don't Show Me This message again. I'm going to be making a few layers and otherwise we'll, we'll see this option every time. Okay. Right. So the particles in the brush stroke and the brush strokes that Particle Shop works on are dynamic and they're generated as you actually paint and they emit from a starting point. And there are lots of different attributes for each of the brushes, but the two common attributes are size and opacity. And I'm going to show you some examples using a brush from the graph impact option set and this I think is available as part of your um, download with the plugin at the moment so so to start with I'll show you how the effect would look if you were to use a mouse and I'm using the trackpad on my laptop there we go But using a graphics tablet, and I use a Wacom Intuos Pro, gives you a lot more control over these brushes. You can use pressure sensitivity in the size and also the opacity. Um, let me show you what I mean. So with the size, it acts very much like a real brush would. The more pressure you place at the start of the brush stroke, the larger the size will be, and the less pressure it will taper off. Let's just undo those, and I've changed the colour by mistake there. And so now we'll look at varying the opacity, and this is the way you can really build up some subtle effects and work in effects using different types of opacity. You'll see me here using the undo button, and you can actually click this to a total of 32 times in each go. And this option here gives you the count of particles and pathways in each brush stroke. So here you can see it's 5%. There we go. If we move this all the way up to 100, you'll see that the brush pathways are a lot larger. And this option here relates to the colour. So if you click on the little colour wheel here, and I'm actually going to pin it to the screen, which you can do by clicking here. And I've selected this blue tone. Now this option here allows you to select the percentage of nearby hue variation. So that's zero. Well, let me just lower this. 
Turn that back on. And this is 30%. And you can see already that the color variation is being worked in. And this is at 100%. Sorry, it's at 50%. There we go. And you also have the option here of clicking glow which gives a shine to your particles and they will they will eventually end up as white and these work best on a dark background so here you can see there so I'm actually going to um, start by demonstrating um, how I'm going to work in the effects on this image so I'm going to start with this brush Caroline. Um, so yes. To interrupt you, and I may have missed this, but did you recommend or did you mention the file size that you're working with here? Um, generally, when I'm I'm using files, I use the same um, dynamics as the uh, photograph file, and that's usually about four thousand by five thousand pixels and three hundred DPI. Um, I've lowered the size a little bit here because it's I'm going to be making quite a lot of layers and it will speed things up a bit. Right, makes perfect sense. It also slows it down when you're doing an online presentation. So Exactly, exactly. So I thought we don't really want to be sitting here tapping our fingers for the whole webinar. <laughs> right, okay, so I'm going to start up by building some background with this grid warp brush and I'm going to do this very lightly. And it's just to create a bit of interest in the background. Now, if you go over an area that you don't want, like I have done here, you can use the eraser tool. And the great thing about this is that it doesn't erase your original image. Um, I think in earlier versions of Particle Shop, it would actually erase the whole layer. Uh, there we go. And you can also use this tool here, which is the Blender tool, um, with the eraser as well, you can adjust the size and opacity of these tools. So here, look, we can just blend in any effects that we want. But this tool will affect your whole image. If I just enlarge it, you can see if I blend over the whole image, it's going to have an effect on everything. So I'm just going to undo that. And I'm going to save this already onto its own layer. And you have an option here to save the brush strokes only. And I always use this option. Um, it just gives you a lot more freedom to manipulate things afterwards. And as you can see here, the brush works on its own layer. One thing I also do on my work is with each different effect I use, I'll have it on its own layer. And the, the reason that I do this is because I may decide later to adjust one particular layer and it's a lot less destructive. So I'm going to convert this layer now to a smart filter. And what this will do is it will allow me to make adjustments to this layer that I can then go and alter at a later time. So I'm going to go into the image and I'm going to reduce the saturation a little and then I'm also going to apply a Gaussian blur and I'm going to use quite a large blur effect and this is just to show you that you really can manipulate all of these brushes in whatever way you want in Photoshop um, so I'm just building up a background at the moment and I'm going to relaunch Particle Shop. So this option here will duplicate all the visible layers below your active layer. So I'm going to launch Particle Shop again. Excuse me, shuffling my notes. Okay, right, so for this one, I'm going to open up the core pack and this is the set of brushes that you get with the version of Particle Shop that's 1.5. And if you have older versions, you can download this update from the, uh, from the website. 
and these are really some great brushes. I'm going to start with this ionized one and I'm going to show you this for a particular reason and this is that some of the brushes in Particle Shop do seem to have a little bit of a mind of their own and the way that I control these brushes, brushes is by having my finger over the escape button so as the brush continues the second you press the escape button the brush will stop and it just gives you that extra control so I'm just filling in some of the background and again I will blur this in Photoshop so let's save this as the brush strokes only and I'll convert this to a smart filter again I'm going to reduce the saturation you do find sometimes that the brushwork looks a lot brighter in Photoshop um, but this can often be to do with your monitor settings and this time I think I'm going to apply a small motion blur just to add a bit of movement to that effect Oops, there we go and I'll reduce the opacity so we've just created a bit of interest in the background with these brushes so let's launch Particle Shop again and this time I'm going to add some colour to the model's skin and it's going to look a little bit strange to start with in Particle Shop uh, I'm going to um, go back down to the graphic impact brush set and this time I'm going to use colour float we just have a look at the brush there we go that's how the brush looks I'm going to lower the size a little and the opacity and I'm going to go over the model skin and you're probably wondering what on earth I'm doing but it will make sense when I'm back in Photoshop and I think that's one of the great things about a plugin like Particle Shop is that you really can experiment lots with the different brushes and don't be afraid to try out sort of slightly bizarre stuff because you never know what effect you're going to get okay nearly done while you're painting here I'm getting a lot of questions sure. um, because we have a lot of people that have come from the painter end of things um, and some people that yeah. are entirely familiar with the plugin so we can see that you're working in Photoshop but I wanted to let everybody know that there's a variety of host applications that you can run Particle Shop from. So that's Paint Shop Pro, Corel Draw, Photo Paint, Aftershot, Lightroom, and Photoshop. And all of these brushes that she's using in Particle Shop, you can also use in Painter. So the packs that you purchase are purchasable for, and if you purchase it once, it works in both Painter and Particle Shop. So it's just a matter of you know what your workflow is, what your host application may be. Sure. Yeah, I, jump, I come from more of a background of working with Photoshop, which is why I'm kind of a lot more um, more Photoshop based with how I how I approach the brushes. Um, right. So this does look really weird. I admit I'm going to save it as brush strokes only. I thought it looked really cool. <laughs> <laughs> it does, yeah, it looks pretty cool. <laughs> a little bit odd, a bit psychedelic. I'm now going to go into the blend mode and I'm going to change the blend mode to soft light. And there you can see that it's just covered the model skin and given it this beautiful colouring and I'm going to convert this to a smart filter and just blur it a little so that the definition between the colours isn't so obvious
Oh, that's a bit too much. Okay, I think that's about right. And one thing you can do within Photoshop is you can add a layer mask, which I'm going to do here just to make sure that the color has not gone over the model's eyes. There we go. Right, so now for the really fun bit. Um, I'm going to launch Particle Shop again. And we're going to use some of the brushes that use the technology in the new Particle Shop update. Um, so, so far we have really only been using brushes that create an effect on top of our layer. Um, but the new technology works actually with the pixels in your layer and it can blend and disperse the actual pixels. So we're going to work a little on turning this model into a painting. And I'm going to start off with the core pack and I'm going to use the blendy brush option. And I think I'll zoom in for this. Okay. And you can move the image by pressing down the space bar. Okay. Let's adjust these. And you can see a painting effect has been built up. Now I would spend a lot longer on this, but I'm I'm sure that nobody really wants to sit down and watch me do this for kind of six hours. So I'm doing a quick job of this. And obviously use a smaller brush for more detailed areas. Um, I'll use a fairly small brush for the hands. I know that you're using a Wacom tablet. And yeah. There have been some questions as to are you, sometimes are you just tapping or in some cases you're probably clicking and dragging. It really depends on the brush. Yeah, I'm literally using it kind of like a paintbrush, so I'm, I'm more dragging it across than just tapping. Okay. And I'm going to enlarge this brush for the larger areas of the skin, more for more for speed. I love these brushes. The effect is just beautiful. Okay. I've also had, while you're painting, I'll let you paint and people can mm. touch. Um, people have been asking, what is the difference between using Particle Shop and cloning in Painter? And Cloning in Painter, just to give a brief description, where you have a certain set of brushes here in Particle Shop that you can paint on the image. Some of them blend, and that will take, if, if she dipped into the skin, it would blend the colors that were there. But the majority of the brushes add paint to the canvas, and you yeah. have to select a color from the color wheel, where the Cloning in Painter allows you to take any kind of brush, oils, watercolor, chalks, pens, pencils, and you can turn on a button that's called clone color, and that lets you pull from the colored pixels within the photograph and paint in any kind of media. So it's actually quite different. So that's quite similar then really to, um, to this particular brush set. To this brush set, yes. Then if you wanted to bring the original photo back, if you took something too far, it's much easier if you're cloning in Painter because there's a restoration brush where you can just paint part, like if you wanted the lips back in or the hands, you could paint them back in without having to have oh, a duplicate layer. Right, I'm just going to save these brush strokes. Are you using the standard pen for the tablet or do you have an art brush? No, I'm just using the standard. Um, yes, my um, I've, I only have the um, Intuos uh, Small Pro, um, and I've just got the standard stylus. Okay. Let me just zoom in a little. If I just duplicate this background layer and drag it to the top, we can just have a quick look at how far we've come on 
in really quite quite little time. So that's the original, and this is our brushwork. And now we're going to work on the feathers. And I'm going to, again, use a blending brush for this effect. Um, and this brush is within the actual blending brush set. I'll just open that. And I'm going to use the smear brush. We just zoom in. That's quite a large effect. I'll reduce this a bit. And it just drags the pixels across and gives an almost kind of oil painting like feel. And again, this is working with the pixels in the layer. And so I'm just dragging the stylus on the track pad. Nearly there. <laughs> a lot of people are asking right now what brushes you're using, mm -hmm. and if you all look on the right-hand side, um, you can see she's using the blend brush pack, so that's why she's able to dip into the photo and kind of mix around what's already there. Some other people are wondering what brushes come with Particle Shop. Right, so with Particle Shop, you'll actually get the core pack, which are these brushes here, um, and this the blending brush that I was using in the previous stage is within this core pack. And in many cases, we're, we're also offering an additional free brush pack with purchase or even within the application itself, so it's always helpful. If you click on the more brushes, sometimes you'll see some stuff you can download for free, just as a tip. Absolutely. I think at the moment it's the, the graphic impact you can you get with the actual plugin download, but um, I think there isn't also this pack here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which just gives you some more, more brushes and fabric clusters and lights and and really, I'm kind of using a few examples from different brush for packs, but you can play around with any of these brushes and get so many different effects with each one. Okay, I'm going to increase the brush size a little here. Oh, <laughs> that'll be the fur brush, which I didn't want. Okay. Could look interesting but I think I'll stick with this one. Okay, let's just increase that a bit. I love the way that it's dragging the pixels across to the areas that, that I painted before. It just, it's a great effect. Again, I would normally spend more time on this. Okay, let's save what we've done so far. There's a lot of questions once again. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's fine. No, please go ahead. I'm just trying to address the question. So many people are asking, I already have the brushes in Particle Shop. Can I use them in Painter? Yes, you can, everybody. And if you didn't have both Painter and Particle Shop to begin with, by default, it will ask which host applications you want to install to. But you can actually restore it. You can grab your brush pack again from within Particle Shop, and then you could install it to Painter. If you guys need help with this, I can follow up with that after the webinar. Actually, I recently um, downloaded Painter myself and was, was delighted that all of my particle brushes were there. It was great. Yeah. 
Right. And maybe that's the case. People don't even know that they're there. They would install and show up all the way at the bottom of the brush selector. Yes, yeah. Okay, right. So, oops, sorry about that. Don't quite know what I'm doing. Right, we're now going to apply some um, different effects. And this will be more of brushes that, that go over the top of the layer. So, so these won't be the blending brushes. So, one thing I love to do while I'm doing work like this is to keep clicking on the before and after. It's like, wow. <laughs> okay. Right, I'm going to apply some, some fairy dust around the model. And let me check which brush set this is in. There we go. Just quickly checking my notes, excuse me. <laughs> okay, this is in the impressions brush set. There we go. So fairy dust. And again, you can adjust the size and the opacity, the amount of particles. I'll show you. That's a large brush. Um, and this is a smaller brush, but with more particles extending from your original point. So I will choose. It's a bit large. Okay, that's about right. So I'm using quite light pressure on my stylus and just tracing around the model slightly to add some interesting speckle effects. And I'm going to change the color to white and just add a few more. So we'll save that. And you can obviously just carry on working within Particle Shop and use lots of different brushes within your one um, layer. But I find I change my mind so much as to what effect that I like that I really like the control of being able to adapt each layer and each brush set. Um, it just... Okay, let's fit this to screen. Right, I think I'm going to run a slight Gaussian blur on this layer, just to blend these in with the image a little bit more. So, I'll convert to a smart filter. Oh, that's way too much. There we go. And next I'm going to paint some sort of lighting effects coming out of the model's hands. Um, and I'm going to do this by using some brushes in the combustion pack. So let's just open Particle Shop. Okay. So I'm going to start by using the Firefly brush, and if we zoom in, it's a bit large. How long would you typically spend working on an image? Um, generally, on an image, I'll spend between two and eight hours. So yeah, this is kind of a <laughs> this is a bit of a quick a quick demonstration. Um, but that can be the start of processing of an image. So that will be a lot of work in Photoshop, a lot of retouching. Um, the image that we started on here, it's already had about an hour's worth of retouch work in Photoshop. Um, okay, so I'm putting more pressure on the brush closer to the hands and easing off as I move away to give a kind of lighting effect 
left here. And I think actually I will use the blend tool just to blend in the start of those brush strokes. And it's a useful tool for doing this. Okay, and then I'm going to add some, um, let's have a look, I'll add some heat trail brushes. Um, oh, that's too large. There seems to be a lot of questions in regards of can you customize your own brushes, for instance, in Painter and bring them into Particle Shop? And I'm sorry to say, guys, no, you cannot. Um, we don't have any import capability in Particle Shop at this time. So it's what's included or the packs that you purchase. I think I was surprised the more that I work with Particle Shop actually how much um, how much variability you've got within each brush. Um, I don't think I realized so much when I started that you could adapt them. Okay, I think I will add a bit of a bluer color. And next, when you save this um, and go back to Photoshop, can you just quickly um, point out, I know you've done it quite a few times, but some people aren't exactly seeing how you're going from Photoshop back to Particle Shop. Oh, absolutely. Yes, I'll do that slower. It's difficult when you kind of almost do things on automatic pilot, don't you, sometimes? Well, I completely understand that. Yeah, the things we take for granted that, um, you know, and I know that we have a lot of beginners here today, so. Yeah, no, absolutely do just, just interrupt whenever. <laughs> Okay, so I've kind of built up a bit of a lighting effect there. So I'm going to save this, save only the brush strokes. Okay, so you can see these in Photoshop. I'm going to zoom in a little. Now to me this looks very um, sort of stuck onto the image, so I'm going to work a little in blending this in with the rest of the image. Now, you can use a lot of options on these layers. For instance, you can simply just lower the opacity and see the difference that makes. So I'm going to do that, but then I'm going to duplicate that layer and play with the blend mode. I think, yeah, I'll set that to a soft light. And then I think I will try a bit of a blur on this bottom layer. And it's really a case of trial and error, really, with it. Um, but I think the more you play about with it, and the less that you're afraid of playing about, the, the more that you'll get out of, out of um, the plugin. I'm not sure if I'm keen on this. I think I liked it how it was before. Thank goodness for the undo. <laughs> I'm just going to settle with lower in the opacity for that. Okay. Right. So next I'm going to add some more effects emitting from the feathers. Um, so I will show you again how we're going to launch Photoshop. Sorry, Particle Shop. So here I have this option clicked. Um, because I want Particle Shop to work on all of the previous layers that I've been using so I can see easier, I need all of those to be onto one layer. And clicking on this option here, which is duplicate visible layers below and merge with active layers. And essentially what this does is it takes a copy of all of the layers that you have with this little eye visibility on and puts it on a layer. And this is the layer that will be opened in Particle Shop. So I've just clicked on the launch Particle Shop. 
and here we have all of those merged layers. Okay. Right, so I think I'm going to use the heat wave brush. Maybe not. Actually, I'm going to open up the fire pack, which is called flame, not fire. And I'll start with this crawler brush. You'll see the colour is still this, this kind of pale blue colour. Okay. So I'm going to lessen the brush size. I'm going to start off lightly and just kind of gradually paint in some effects. And it's giving it an artistic sort of digital art surreal feel to it. I'm going to add some glow to this. And some darker colours. Okay. And I think I'll also use this Flame 1 brush. Just add in some more colours. It's a bit here as well. Okay, let's save this. Just fit this to screen. They're wondering how long it took you to become comfortable in Particle Shop. Um. To be honest, I think it didn't really take long, but I think once I got got the hang of the fact that you could really, really change the brushes and to not be afraid to experiment with it, um, I think using a graphics tablet does really, really help um, because you can really use it as though you're painting. Um, and I think just not being afraid to try try different brushes out and try different effects and, and keep blending it within Photoshop and, and altering things and having just playing, enjoying it. I hope, hope that makes sense. Right, I'm just going to lower the opacity of this a bit. Um, I'm not quite happy with that actually. I'm just going to do one final stage to this image, um, which is to add more of this painterly feel to it. So again, I'm going to keep this option here selected, which is the Duplicate Visible Layers, Launch Particle Shop. And then I'm going to use some brushes in the Impression set. Let's just have a look. And I love using these at the end of an image to really um, Give it a kind of dispersion feel. Um, and I'm going to use the Poppies brush. Uh, let's have a look. Okay, that's quite a large brush. And you'll see, essentially, it is dispersing some of these pixels. And I think that's the brush is too big. And it's a good effect, sort of especially going around the edge of the model, just gives it a real sort of dynamic feel. So that's causing a kind of dispersion effect there. And I'll use a larger brush at a lower opacity just to kind of, oh, that was a bit much, <laughs> just to splodge a few paint effects over. Okay. So save only the brush strokes. And that's kind of added a lot of painterly feel. Um, I'm going to reduce the opacity a little. And the reason that I have 
save these on different layers is that you can then play around with chopping and changing your layer order. Um, for example, I may want to put this at a different stage of the composition. I think I prefer it at the end. But you know, you can play around with different aspects. For example, I may want to turn off the Gaussian blur on the skin or some of the blur on the background. And because I've saved these on individual layers, I'm able to do that. Um, obviously, if you do all of the work on one layer, it's a lot more difficult. Okay, one thing I do like to try at the end of an image is to take the original background, but to change the opacity, I'm going to reduce it a lot here, and you can alter the blend mode of this. So, say if I set it to overlay, then that kind of adds a whole different dimension to the effect, and you can play around with lots of different combinations of, of what you've already done until you're happy with the image, but actually I quite like what we've ended up with. So there we go. I hope that was useful and that I didn't run through that too fast. No, that was fantastic. I think that was such a great introduction to a variety of brushes and and we are just one more time because we're still having questions about sure. how you're going from Photoshop to Particle Shop. Um, and I know okay. that there's a little palette that pops up, and you can also go from the drop-down menus on the top. But if you could just... <laughs> yeah, I will show you again. That's no problem. Right. So there are two ways of accessing Particle Shop, and I've been using this little box here. And you access that by going into Window, Extensions, and this is a whole list of my extensions here, but here you will see Particle Shop. And that will stay open in your Photoshop window. The other way that you can open Particle Shop is by going into your filter menu. And here you'll see that it's under Painter and opening it from, from here. I hope that's I hope, I hope I made that clearer. Well, no, that's that is perfect. And you know, in regards of what you bring into Particle Shop, it's really your choice, everybody. You can see throughout this webinar, you created quite a few layers with just the brush strokes, but you can take any individual layer or group of layers into Particle Shop to use as the source when you're painting there. Um, and I'm just scanning through. I've got some questions coming. This is an interesting question, and I, I don't know if you can answer this, but have you reached a maximum file size that you can effectively paint in Particle Shop with? Is there a size that might be too big that you would say don't bring um, margin? Not, not that I've come across, but I tend to not work in huge, huge files. so. Yeah, that could just be down to me. Um, I think the maximum size I, I would have would be kind of 500, by, sorry, 5,000 by 5,000 pixels. Um, I've never, I've never had problems with with a file working in Particle Shop. But then, yeah, I don't use huge files. Okay, great. Um, and everybody, just so you know, some people are brand new. Particle Shop sells the. The standard retail price is $49.99. Um, you know, we have promotions from time to time. We offer, as we've mentioned, free brush packs and whatnot. All of the brush packs, if you ha have bought them for Particle Shop and you're now interested in Painter, they will all work in Painter also, just to remind everybody. And thank you so much. This was so great. I'm, I'm happy. Thank you. It's been a privilege. It really has.